Political science is, in a way, a tragic discipline. And I don't mean tragic like what it's like at a normal faculty meeting. Uh, I mean tragic in the Greek sense, which is that the idea uh, that uh, disciplinary professionalization uh, could go hand in hand uh, with greater relevance uh, basically uh, goes back to the uh, dawn uh, of modern political science. And none other than Charles Merriam, the University of Chicago, the father of the new science of politics, and also somebody deeply committed to the progressive era agenda uh, is a, uh, a good example of that. So rigor and relevance uh, for Merriam, for Harold Laswell, um, and maybe for Henry and a lot of my contemporary poli uh, uh, political science colleagues uh, is, uh, uh, goes together like uh, tea and crumpets. Now, the problem with this optimism uh, strikes me as twofold. First of all, well, there is sometimes uh, in which rigor and relevance, and rigor I'm going to define in a particular way. I'm not saying it's the only way to define it. Well, in, uh, upon occasion, they're mutually reinforcing. Uh, they are also often in tension. And as I talk about in the book that Steve was kind enough to uh, shill for me, um, that the preferred tools of modern political science uh, are not useful uh, to all the important questions uh, that policymakers uh, care about. And in fact, when the tension becomes manifest, uh, I argue that uh, we often uh, make the decision that rigor, narrowly defined, trumps relevance. Now, what's the evidence for that? Any of you who are in a, a political science department with a graduate PhD program will uh, undoubtedly uh, hear echoes in your department of what my department is, uh, has done in recent years. We went 10 years ago from uh, one required <coughs> methods course uh, to five required methods courses today. Um, and so think about the impact that has on the graduate curriculum, particularly in terms of the trade-offs between other sorts of uh, courses one may, might take. Um, and also think about the signal that that sends to uh, aspiring young uh, political scientists. And indeed, policy relevance is often outsourced as sort of an afterthought. So you have uh, the good work of um, Jim Goldgeier at AU, also supported by Steve and Carnegie, uh, in the Bridging the Gap program uh, that is doing the Lord's work, uh, in my view, literally. Um, but it's work that's being done by AU, not by uh, these uh, the departments that are actually uh, training the, uh, the graduate students. Um, graduate students are the canaries in the coal mine. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to hold uh, elucidation uh, of what I see those canaries telling me uh, for the, uh, the Q&A. Um, but the book that uh, Steve was uh, kind enough to, uh, to mention uh, is actually a study of two trajectories. They're like two ships in the night. The disciplinary development of political science on the one hand, um, and the development uh, of the subfield uh, of international security uh, on the other hand. Um, in, it, the, in the subtitle, we talk about the waxing and waning uh, of the place of security studies uh, in political science, uh, and that's really the, uh, the key to the story um, that I'm telling here. Now, there's been a lot of optimism uh, recently, um, and I think Henry will uh, well uh, articulate this position that maybe this was the case in the past, maybe, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, maybe even into the 1980s, um, the uh, disengagement of political science from the policy world uh, was uh, more evident than maybe it is uh, today. But let me talk about one key example that a lot of people would point to as an il illustration uh, of the optimistic position. Uh, and this is the Minerva Initiative, 
the initiative that Secretary of Defense Bob Gates announced in April of 2008 to mobilize the academy uh, for the global war on terrorism. And I think if you actually look carefully, and I have done that in the uh, book, uh, that what you see even in the Minerva initiative is that uh, for every step forward in terms of re-engaging uh, the discipline and policy relevant work, you see at least a step, if not a step uh, and a half backwards. Um, and again, I'll go into uh, more discussion uh, of how the initial arrangement with the National Science Foundation for a big part of Minerva did not produce uh, what Gates and his colleagues were looking for. And in fact, NSF has been replaced by the U.S. Institute of Peace, which I think is, uh, speaks volumes uh, in terms of uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm.